Hello Year 1 and welcome to the second part of your science learning. So you've had session 1 and this is your session 2. So your mission objective for today for this session is to identify and name a variety of common wild and garden plants. And your rocket words are wildflower, buttercup, stinging nettle, daisy and dandelion. Your scientific skill is to observe closely. Okay, so first of all, what is the difference between a garden plant and a wild plant? So pause here, have some time to think, share your ideas with somebody, or you can write these down. And then when I move on to the next slide, it will be explained over the next few PowerPoint slides. So a wild plant has not been changed by humans. So we, we haven't changed the plant, we haven't touched it anyway. If it's a garden plant, they have been changed by humans to thrive in a garden setting. So we've interfered with them, okay? So your rocket words, we're coming back to those. You've got wildflower, which is a type of flower that grows naturally in the wild. A buttercup is a wildflower with bright yellow blossoms. A stinging nettle is a plant which has stinging defensive hairs. If you've ever been stung by one of those, they are, they do really hurt. Um, a daisy is a flower with flat petals that surround a round centre. And a dandelion is a plant with bright yellow blossoms that turn into round, fluffy seed heads. And these are very common, like I say, common plants that you will probably recognise. So Molly decides to go outside to explore her garden. Molly wants to learn about the difference between wild and garden plants. So I wonder if you're a bit like Molly and want to be curious. So Molly's garden is full of flowers which have come into bloom. The flowers come in all sorts of shapes and colours, just like when we spoke about the trees. So see how many different ones you can identify and record. So looking at this video, I'll leave it playing. Is there any there that you recognise? or know what they are from this video. Okay, so take your time, you can share with somebody or write these down. You might want to draw what you can see. Okay. So, Molly walks over to the corner of her garden. She has spotted a bee landing on a yellow flower. What type of flower has the bee landed on? Can you recognise what this flower is? Give you some time to think while the video continues playing and then I'll skip to the next one slide again, write it down, or draw, or tell somebody. Okay, so that's right, if you've got this, it's landed on a dandelion, so the bees landed on a dandelion. So describe what the dandelion looks like to somebody at home, or you can write it down. So what does it look like? So have some time again, if you want to go back to the other slide and watch that again, or if you want to have a little look on here for a bit longer, so the bee flies over to another flower in the garden this time. So Molly follows the bee in her garden. And what type of flower does Molly see next? So do you recognise this flower? Do you remember what it's called? It was on some of our rocket words at the beginning of the PowerPoint. And you recognise it, you know what flower it is. Some more time, have a guess. So Hopefully you got this, and well done if you did, but this flower is a daisy. So did you know that daisies like to be planted in the full sun and in early spring? So what might happen if you planted a daisy in the shade and in winter? Okay, so have a think what might happen to the daisy if it was planted in shade and in winter because it likes sun and it likes to be planted in early spring. So perfect time to plant daisies at the moment. So, if you didn't already know, the daisy would not grow very well, maybe not grow at all. If it hasn't got the right conditions for it, then it would really struggle to grow. So it might not grow very tall, it might not look very healthy, okay? And, it, and so that's why it's important that when you buy plants as well, they tell you when is a good time to plant them and what they need. What time of year? So Molly follows the bee again. The bee decides not to land on the next wild plant. Can you name the plant? Why do you need to be careful near these plants? The plant can be identified by its green leaves with its zigzag edges. So the bee's not landed on this plant for a reason. Why do you think it's not landed on this plant and do you know what it is? 
So why do you need to be careful near this plant? And if you've ever been stung by this one, you'll know why the bee does not want to go near it. So Molly made the mistake of touching the stinging nettle, which made her skin very itchy. So Molly found another plant growing nearby. Now, if you didn't already know this, and it says, can you name the plant? So if you get stung by a stinging nettle, often growing near stinging nettles is a type of plant that can help you. If you rub it back onto your skin where you're stinging, it can stop it from stinging. Okay, that, is, that plant looks like this, it's got quite big leaves, and it's called a dock leaf. Okay, dock leaves don't just relieve stings, they're also a food plant for the small copper butterfly. So the copper butterfly also likes a dock leaf. Molly notices another very similar plant to the stinging nettle. Molly notices that the plant's leaves are very similar, so that zigzag edges, um, it's similar to the nettle, but it has white leaves, this one. Can you guess its name? The very similar leaves, okay, but it's got um, some white leaves as well. So this is also a nettle, but it's called the white dead nettle. So you'll be pleased to know that the white dead nettle does not sting. So even though it looks like a stinging nettle and it has got the name nettle in it, this one doesn't sting. And this is a wild flower. So why is this called a wild flower? Have some time to think. So in the corner of Molly's garden, she notices a small yellow flower. Oh, I'll go back to that story. So the reason why it's a wild flower or called a wild flower is because humans don't, haven't touched it and it just grows naturally. Okay. So in the corner of Molly's garden, she notices a small yellow flower. Can you name the flower? Now this one, this type of flower, I don't know if you've ever known about this, but some people pick them, they put them under their chins, and it changes the colour of your chin. So can you name the flower? So well done if you've got this, but this is called a buttercup. So a game, here you go, it says a children's game, a lot of children hold the buttercup up to the chin. So a yellow reflection is supposed to indicate fondness for butter. So do you think this is true? And I assume you think no, so it's just some, a little bit of a silly, silly game. Okay, so Molly walks over to her favourite plant, and this is called a rose. And roses are really pretty because they come in all types of colours, and these are some lovely colour roses here. Is a rose a wild or garden plant? Have a little think about that. So, I might skip this video. Um, so, so your assignment, your little mission today, you scientists, is to visit a garden or to go to a woodland or go for a walk, okay? I'm just going to... Okay, and look at the different types of plants which appear. Okay, so you appear in both. So it says here, visit a garden as well as a woodland or outdoor area. So see if you're able to visit a garden and see if you're able to visit a woodland or area. Or you can just do one and write about that and draw and talk about that. But the idea is, is if you can compare both, that would be really good. But if you don't have, if you're not able to do that, that's absolutely fine. You can just record the flowers that you see or the plants that you see in places and the flowers that you see in somewhere that you can walk to. So if you haven't got a garden, then that's absolutely fine. OK, so draw diagrams to show the parts of different plants and then keep records of plant, how the plants have changed over time. So what you need to do is any of the plants that you see, you can record them in a tally, how many you've seen, or you can draw the plants that you've seen and then label them. And we've done lots of about labeling. So this is why it links really nicely onto your, your previous session, the one before this. So you can draw some of, your, of the flowers that you see, label the parts, and then the idea is, is over the spring or moving into summer, if you visit that same place, you can have a little look and see how they've changed. Have they grown at all? Is there more flowers there? Is there less? Okay, so that's what the developing, your, your skill that you're developing is that observation. And you can always use a magnifying glass if you'd like to. And if we're all back to school and everything, then we can always have a little, little look on um, on the fields and the forest school area at some of our plants that change over time. And we can take out some scientific equipment like the magnifying glasses, which is exciting. So think about, describe how you can identify and group the plants you have observed. 
So that's a bit of a fly high there. So how could you how can you identify those plants and how could you group them? What ways can you group them? And then here's a recap of some of the the rocket words we looked at. So wildflower, buttercup, sitting your nettle, daisy, and dandelion, which I hope you have a better understanding of now. And if you didn't know what they were, you do know what they are now. I think that is the end. So good luck with your observations of your plants that you see remember to draw them make sure you use the right colors so they look exactly the same remember to label them and do not worry if you cannot do a woodland and a garden if you haven't got a garden just go out and have a little walk and just choose somewhere to have a look at what's growing and what you can identify and what you can see and as always you can use the internet it's very useful if there's a plant that you do not know or do not recognize you can take some photos of it and then and ask somebody that maybe they will know or you can have a little look on the internet as long as you've got support with an adult as well to help you with that okay good luck and enjoy your session two of your science learning